Hi, welcome. My name's Paul Klain. I'm the packaging segment manager for Yaskawa Motion, and uh, welcome to our live product demo. Uh, we're here in Waukegan, Illinois, and we'd love to be in Chicago at Pack Expo, but uh, that's not going to be the case this year. So, Pack Expo Connects uh, is a nice alternative. So, this is a live demo, and if you have questions, feel free to submit them online. Um, we'll do our best to uh, follow up with them. So, today, our, our topic is singular control and the impact on robot mechanisms. With this, we have the ability to change out one robot type for another, and that requires no changes to the programming or any of the code that was developed. And that's a really cool feature. We're excited to talk about it. Robots are a growing trend in packaging from deltas and scaras, which do a lot of high speed pick and place, articulated robots and gantry, which focused heavily in secondary and case packing, and then you have the, the larger sized arms that do palletizing and many different end of line functions. Machine builders today battle what robot technology to use and why do you want to use it. Oftentimes they're looking for a combination of performance, flexibility, there might be some mechanical limitations, as well as cost. So as the demands change and the applications change, so do the solutions. So before we discuss changing out the robot mechanisms, what I want to do is introduce the basis for being able to do this, which is our singular control. So we're going to jump into a short video about singular control, and uh, that'll queue up here next. One controller, one brain, controlling any number of different mechanisms. Anybody can program a robot. One control for any of the automation or any of the robot solutions. Simple, unique, the solve all solution. That is the strength and power of singular control. What you'll see in this demo is an array of traditional motion control axes as well as an array of different uh, robot mechanisms all being run off of one singular control. Our MP3300 IEC controller has the ability to control the traditional servo axes as well as the robot control. When you want to change from say a gantry to an articulated robot, keeping the same programming that you already did, we can show exactly how that drop-down menu allows us to change mechanisms. Anybody who understands ladder logic, function blocks, or structured text can program a robot utilizing our singular control platform. You're only programming one unit with one programming language that never has to change. Coming from a manufacturer of both servo drives as well as robots, this gives us the real understanding of both technologies and be able to implement it into one control. I'd like to think that the machine builder will look at singular control as being the solve all solution for their control platform. Machine builders have to come up with different designs using different mechanisms, and if you could use one control, for any of the automation, that would be the simplest solution out there. Uh, welcome back. So now that we have a more basic understanding of singular control, uh, Nishant, who's one of our senior application engineers, uh, he's gonna explain some of the control of the three robots on one control. And what you're gonna see is a delta, a gantry, and an articulated that's uh, accomplishing similar moves and similar profile, being able to be done with one controller with no changes made to the program. So 
Up next is our three robots video. All three devices that we had in the video can be run off the same single MP3300 IEC controller. And in short, all they have to do is to point to the correct mechanism in his project. Once he does that, the controller is going to run the second mechanism. The code is going to remain the same. They will not have to make any changes to the project that he had for the previous mechanism at all. It's just a matter of minutes. The global search and a global replace, just like you do in Microsoft Word or any other Word document. It's probably going to save you weeks, uh, if not months, of programming time. In, in the past, if you had to switch from mechanism to mechanism, you, the controls engineer, would have to derive the equations to run the other mechanism and then go to the drawing board and figure out the details of how motion could be implemented on the new mechanism and then program it again. Uh, from scratch. Instead, we have taken all that pain and we've done all that, uh, all, all the math and the kinematics and embedded it into our function blocks so the user basically does not have to recreate all the math behind it. It gives, it frees them more time and gives them more time to, to focus on their machine rather than on the code for the machine. Great. So love that three robot video. Um, you know, after watching that, one might ask, uh, you know, why is there a need for this capability? And so I wanted to welcome Nishant, who you clearly recognize from the video, one of our senior en uh, application engineers here at uh, Yaskawa Motion. And uh, we've got a lot of questions that uh, people ask about being able to switch out mechanisms, and he'll be able to hopefully shed some light. So welcome, Nishant. Thank you, Paul. Yeah. So. Let's start off with the first question here. Uh, why would a machine builder want to switch mechanisms on a machine? Flexibility is key. Uh, in any manufacturing environment, you want the machine builder to be able to provide their end users a variety of solutions. And there, it could be geometric solutions. You, you probably have different machines that need to fit into different parts of their factory floor that might have different, different uh, shapes and sizes. Um, there could be price, which is a defi defining factor. Um, uh, so, so we want to be able to provide our machine builders the capability to provide their end users a flexible range of solutions. So if it's a lower priced application, you could do with a 2D or 3D gantry. If you had uh, you know, a more, more repeatability to be concerned about, then you might want to go for an articulated arm, three-dimensional, three uh, six-degree of freedom articulated arm. Uh, which has more flexibility to get their pick-and-place applications done. So variety of reasons, but the key is flexibility. We want to be able to have our machine builders provide a wide range of solutions to their end users. Excellent. Yeah, that's a uh, right, the right robot for the right application. Exactly. So that's great. So uh, kind of a follow-up, what are some of the various types of mechanisms that the machine builder can choose from when it comes to uh, these uh, robot mechanisms? The uh, MP, uh, C MPIEC series controllers from Yaskawa does provide the kinematics for various mechanisms uh, that are driven by the controller itself. Uh, for example, we have gantry systems that can be configured for six degrees of freedom. You can have um, uh, SCARA robot mechanisms, uh, three-link SCARA robot mechanisms. Um, you have your uh, 3D and 2D delta, H-bots, T-bots. So all this is just a few, few of the examples that we have. We also support the, uh, uh, the entire range of the Escalva's articulated six degree of freedom robots. Excellent. Uh, all the robots can be controlled using uh, from the MPIC program. Wow, that's a lot of offer. So, uh, you know, with that, so there's clearly some existing uh, robots that, that uh, the controller will work with, but now the question comes is, what if a machine builder has a unique mechanism, you know, that's not selectable in the software that you showed that uh, is a drop-down. Um, how does that work? 
Great question. Um, a lot of, lot of our machine builders uh, have unique machines and mechanisms that they work over a long period of time, and they, have, they, they like to protect that, uh, that intellectual property, their, their uh, designs, would, they like to protect their uh, kinematics and their mm. equation and the math behind it. So we do offer, um, in, in our software package, they, we allow them to write their own kinematics and lock it up in function blocks that cannot be opened by anybody other than themselves. And once they do that, uh, the same um, architecture that we use to run our uh, built-in robot kinematics can be used on their equations. So we do support, uh, we do encourage people to you know, come up with their own mechanisms if they want to, and uh, we can help uh, integrate that into our existing architecture so that they can run these robots, their custom robots, just to, like the way we run our, our uh, built-in robotic yeah. solutions. Wonderful. Well, I think that's one of the benefits of Yaskawa deeply knowing our motion controller and knowing uh, as much as we do about the robots. And I, I, I'd like to add that uh, in, the, in the past with most of our customers, we've also helped them with the kinematics if they have any, any questions or uh, if they need help with the equations, we do have uh, great support at Yaskawa to do this, uh, the math and the kinematics of these uh, robotic solutions for them. Oh, wonderful, great to know. Uh, so last question here, once the machine builder decides to switch a mechanism, what would, uh, what would they have to do to incorporate the controls of the new mechanism into the robot controller code, into the uh, machine controller code? Um, we work very hard to try to make this as seamless as possible <coughs> in, in the software. So uh, it's, it's a very simple process. They, uh, they have to uh, select the new mechanism that they're going to use in the configuration tool. Uh, once they do that, uh, they have to go into the project and just replace their instances where they used the name of their old mechanism, replace it with the name of the new mechanism. It's just a global search and replace function. Now, once you do that, none of the programming has to change. All the function blocks, the sequence, the logic, everything remains the same. So we've, we've worked very hard to try to make that as seamless as possible, and that's a very easy process to do. Yeah, and that's uh, pretty amazing that it's an easy process to take one totally different mechanism, replace it with another, and really uh, have to change little or no code. None of the talk points, none of the waypoints, or in, in none of the robotic uh, paths have to be changed because the same function blocks that uh, call motion are used on both mechanisms. The kinematics and the underlying math are taken care of underneath. The user does not have to worry about having to change any of those equations or sequence or logic in their program. Wow, excellent. Well, uh, what a great exchange of uh, information. Nishan, thank you for joining us. and. That concludes our uh, Three Robots live demo. Thank you for joining us. Thank you.